As referenced just a moment ago, a salon owner in Dallas, Shelley Luther, was sentenced to jail time, a week in jail, for operating her salon. For the crime of being a salon owner, for the crime of cutting people's hair, for the crime of doing her job, for the crime of feeding her kids in America, she's now going to jail. But Shelley Luther, and I don't say this lightly, she is a hero. I don't mean it ironically. She is actually a hero, standing up to tyranny, standing up for her rights, standing up for her right to feed her kids. Um, and I want you to listen to her. She's talking to the, she's at the, in court at sentencing. And she's told that if she simply apologizes and admits that she's wrong and promises not to do it again, okay, admits that she's wrong like a bad little girl and, and, and uh, says she'll never do it again, she won't have to go to jail. But she refuses and her refusal uh, must be heard. Listen to this. Judge, I would like to say that I have much respect for this court and laws. And that I've never been, been in this position before. And it's not some place that I want to be. But I have to disagree with you, sir, when, I, when you say that I'm selfish. Because feeding my kids is not selfish. I have hairstylists that are going hungry because they'd rather feed their kids. So, sir, if you think the law is more important than kids getting fed then please go ahead with your decision, but I am not going to shut the salon. That woman is a, is a badass. And every word of what she said is true and right and moral and good. Her defiance is moral and good. So I, I think that's great. Uh, number two, New York City is very proud of itself because for the first time in 115 years, it shut down overnight service to do a thorough cleaning of, uh, of the trains. So here they are cleaning. You can see the footage. Uh, now, speaking of for-profit organizations versus government-run organizations, for-profit institutions clean on a daily basis, sometimes on an hourly basis, dep depending on the establishment. But the New York City subway system is doing a good thorough cleaning for the first time since the Wright brothers took their first flight. And they're so proud of it that, you know, they're they're putting the propaganda video out so they can show, look, well, we're, look what we're doing. I mean, th there's another simple thing. Speaking of simple things that New York could have done. How about clean your, how about clean? How about that for an idea? Or even why not shut down the subway system? I mean, the subway system is still operating. It's been a vector for this disease this entire time. And they keep it going. You know, they get mad at people for going to the park. And meanwhile, they've got these cramped, poorly ventilated capsules where they're cramming people in. Number three, here's a, a headline in, in New York Magazine that I love. Um, it says, Joe Biden is at his best when he's neither speaking nor appearing in public. Will his campaign have to abandon its most effective strategy? This reminds me of uh, what I said to my high school principal when I got in trouble for skipping class. I said, you know, I'm at my best when I'm neither completing assignments nor attending school at all. Are you really going to force me to abandon my most effective strategy? Of course, that tactic didn't work for me, and I don't think it worked for Biden either. Number four, put your conspiracy hats on. The Daily Wire reports uh, a well-respected scientist at the University of Pittsburgh Medical Center who was on the verge of making, quote, very significant findings in the fight against the coronavirus, was murdered over the weekend inside his home. Dr. Bing Lu, 37, who's from China, was shot multiple times around noon Saturday inside his home in the 200 block of Elm Court, says the Pittsburgh Post-Gazette. Police believe that Mr. Lu was uh, shot by another man, identified later by uh, the Allegheny County Medical Examiner's Office as Hao Gu, 46, of Pittsburgh, who then got into his car, parked about... 100 yards away, and killed himself. Um, now, police are saying that he was home by himself. The two men knew each other. Law enforcement says there's an investigation still going. I mean, uh, murder, suicide, they knew each other. I don't think there's uh, reason for conspiracy theories, but you know, you know they're going to 
definitely be, be coming on strong with, with something like this. Number five, and finally, Science Times tells us, uh, it says, researchers from the Washington University School of Medicine in St. Louis have successfully disabled a gene in specific mouse cells, preventing mice from becoming obese, even after being fed a high-fat diet. Um, And then it gets into a lot of sciencey stuff with words that I can't pronounce. So basically what they're saying is that scientists may soon be able to disable the obesity gene, curing obesity for good. But you know, I hate to be that guy, but there is another way to disable the obesity gene and cure obesity. Uh, That's called going for a jog, uh, skipping the Cinnabon stand at the mall when the mall's open again. I mean, things like that. Eating a, a few salads, stuff like that. Thank you for tuning into The Daily Wire, one of the fastest growing conservative media outlets in the entire country. If you enjoyed this video, uh, be sure to give it a like and a subscribe to our YouTube channel so you don't miss out on any of our content.